Hi everybody, this is Sophie aka Malivrio Tech. Welcome to my second video in English dedicated this time to the Goncourt Prize, which is the most famous literary French prize. I am currently in Paris, France, in the Jardin des Tuileries, and I am so thrilled that I'm finally able to make this video because you know COVID 2020, 2021, and it's gonna keep going like that, but still. I'm happy to be able to shoot this video and to talk about all these books. Let's do it. Okay, so let's start with a little history and context. The Goncourt Prize was created in 1902 after Edmond de Goncourt, a writer, requested it in his will. The prize has been awarded every November since 1903. Because it's the oldest French literary prize, it is considered as the most prestigious one and constitutes a big reference for millions of readers who trust the jury's judgment each year. The prize usually assures the winner to sell tens of thousands of copies, especially during the holiday season because the latest Goncourt traditionally constitutes a gift to and from readers for Christmas. And it also gives their name a chance to be known well beyond the French borders. At the beginning of November, the winner is announced at this restaurant's Place Gaillon and the winner appears at this window. Famous authors received it, like Marcel Proust, Chateaubriand, André Malraux, Robert Merle, Simone de Beauvoir, Romain Gary, Michel Tournier, Marguerite Dura, Eric Orsena. But did you hear a lot of women's names in there? Not really, right? That's because out of 117 winners as of today, only 11 were women. 11, you heard me. That's 9.4% of the winners, the first one being Beatrix Beck in 1952. We know how chauvinistic and patriarchal the world was well into the 60s, but one might think more women would have been recognized for their work after that. Well, no. That's one of the controversies that exist around this prize. Another one being that tons of authors whose books found success and were praised by critics were never awarded the Goncourt, like André Gide, Albert Camus, Jean-Paul Sartre, Marguerite Yusuna, or even Françoise Sagan. Here is a quote from a magazine in 1999. Someone said, the Goncourt Prize hardly ever awards the best book of the year. Yeah, people always wonder why this book and not the other ones. And last but not least, lots of winners consider this prize more of a curse than a blessing. Here are two of the quotes that resume it all. Jean-Louis Bory, the 1945 winner, said, The general public reads your book for the mere reason that it got the Goncourt, but doesn't read the other ones for the one reason that they'll never get it. Meanwhile, specialists won't read your book simply because it got the Goncourt and won't read the other ones because the first one got the Goncourt. Well, this statement is unfortunately very true. And the second quote is from Yves Audouard, a journalist and writer active between 1940 and 2000. He said, I quote, The Goncourt totally distorts this country's literary life and ruins the winner's life, makes the ones who miss it bitter. This is also so true, but reveals such a contrast with, you know, this gigantic sales, which we talked about. More than the idea of not liking to read what everybody else was reading, I actually thought, genuinely thought, that Goncourt books were all about war, most specifically World War I and II. But actually, this is exactly why I wanted to make this video, because I want to know if Goncourt books are usually about war. So here are the three simple questions that we're gonna try to answer with this video. First of all, are all Goncourt books about war? And any type of war. And second question, are they really worth reading? Are they all good? And third, why did these books win the most prestigious literary prize in France? So of course, to answer all these questions, I was not able to read the 117 of them. Uh, given the amount of time I had. So instead I focused on the last 10, uh, the winners of 2011 to 2020. Alright, so let's start with the winner of 2011. His name is Alexis Genie and he wrote the book L'Art Français de la Guerre, The Art of War, the, the French Art of War. 
And this is the story of a guy who feels a bit lost. Uh, he meets an artist who participated in several wars. The first one gets the therapy through art, the second one basically tells, tells his story uh, when he was at war. And this book was not really uh, the best of all the ones I read. It was extremely repetitive, extremely slow. You couldn't really see the purpose of it all. The criticism he makes on colonialism by the French government is, is, is very interesting. It's just that all his comments and the ideas are lost in the narrative. Uh, and a lot of things are said that are not very interesting or that do not really help the story just progress, you know? And, and also the characters are not really appealing. So overall, you get a book that is not really successful in terms of telling a story that's interesting and that just makes you want to keep reading. The next winner of 2012 was Jérôme Ferrari. And he wrote this book, Le Sermon sur la Chute de Rome, The Sermon on the Fall of Rome. And it's the story of um, two boys who spent their, their childhood together and they end up buying a bar in Corsica together. The two teenagers make the place very lucrative and very successful. It's just that um, over time, the, that specific world with the clients and the way you know uh, everybody lives over there is just leading them to their end. The story is a bit weird because the concept of this book, apparently the author wanted to link the theories of a of, of a fifth century philosopher with the fate of these two boys and trust me it was really hard to follow the logic and, and it's really bad because actually you have a beautiful writing with touching movement moment sorry but it's just it's just the story is hard to follow period and there's tons of religious historical and philosophical references it's very hard to follow so this one is a bit has a weird balance in it uh, it was not a bad read it's not that I would not recommend it. It's just, it was kind of unsatisfying. Let's talk about the next one, the book from 2013. Uh, so the winner was Pierre Lemaitre, and he wrote this book that was translated with the title The Great Swindle. So this book was adapted into a movie, and apparently the title between the book and the movies are different. So you're gonna have two different titles for this one. The story is about soldiers during World War One, and they're in the trenches, you know, and they're um, starting a new mission, attacking the enemies in front of them, but they just don't know that they're 10 days away from armistice. It's just that the mission is a disaster and also that their lieutenant betrayed them. So the story starts like that, and actually this is an extremely good beginning. Like, it's one of the best beginning of books I, I've read in my life, uh, because it's extremely powerful, thrilling. The first 100 pages are breathtaking and full of suspense. It's just that after that, it's just everything is getting slower. At the very moment the characters leave the hospital because they were injured during the war and, and, and this mission, the story is different. So it could be a bit disappointing, but the beginning is extremely good. And just for the beginning, you should read this book. Uh, like I was saying, it was adapted into a movie. The movie is very good. See you up there. The author ended up writing two other stories with the same characters. The titles are Couleur de l'incendie for the second book and Miroir de nos peines for the third book, which was actually published very recently in 2020. Uh, I don't think they've been translated in English. I want to say yet because of the success of the first one. The 2014 winner was uh, a woman, Lydie Salver, and she wrote this book Cry Mother Spain, pas pleurer in French, and it's about a mother who tells her story when she was a little girl during the summer of 1936, during the war of Spain. And she tells her story to her daughter, how you know she became an immigrant and how also she left the, she left the country right before Franco took power. It was a great book. I was surprised at first because I was not expecting to uh, like it. Also, I was a bit disturbed by the writing it mixes several languages, it mixes Spanish, French, and there's also a lot of gra uh, grammatical mistakes. <laughs> but still, actually it's a very good story. First of all, because it deals with a moment of the European history that usually the French people don't learn about. 
and I, I think it's the same in America. We don't really hear a lot about the war of Spain. We almost always study about World War One, World War Two, and then period, right? It was also for a great deal autobiographical because the author is actually, I think it's her mother who told her the story. So this is why you, you can feel it's true, you know? Uh, you can feel that uh, it comes, it's very sincere, it comes from the heart. It's very high quality and overall I really enjoyed this one. You're gonna see it's one of the few I really enjoyed. And actually see, it's the first female writer we're talking about. 2015, Mathias Sena, he published Compass, Boussole. This one I hated, let me tell you, like, right away. This is about a guy who was just waiting for his medical results. In the meantime, he just spends the, the whole night remembering the story he used to have with the lady he met like in the eastern countries he just thinks about this lady and their love story and their sex story and and, and then he mixes this with the time he spent in syria it was awful it was it was ex it was so slow with an affected writing with outrageous digressions Basically, there's no story. He, nothing happens. He just tells about his memories and what he thought and his sex life. And I just couldn't finish it. And, and that's that's the type of book the author keeps doing. He actually won another Goncourt a few years before that in a different category. Uh, but the problem is the book was the same style, the same was written the same way. It was not a satisfying book. Actually, the other one I could finish. I would not recommend this author. And damn, he, he won twice the Goncourt in two different categories. Why? Why? 2016, another woman won the Goncourt. The second one in just 10 years. That's not that many, right? That was Leila Slimani. She wrote Chanson Douce, The Perfect Nanny. And it was adapted into a movie too. And uh, it's the story of a young couple that, you know, they just hire a nanny because the woman wants to resume working. The one they find is just perfect, like it's just paradise. They couldn't be happier, but the nanny becomes too attached. In the end, she does something irredeemable. Should I tell you that she kills the kids? Hmm. Anyway, <laughs> this book is really interesting in the sense that it deals with taboos about parenting, how to be a parent, uh, you know how society can be very judgmental and critical to parents. That's that's how this book is very interesting. The thing is, the author writes very simple sentences. The end is unsatisfying because uh, you don't really understand why the the character, the nanny, did what she did. The explanations on how she got there are not very enough. Basically, the main topic is good. The way she did it is not that super uh, interesting in that way. In 2017, Eric Villard won the Goncourt with the story L'Ordre du Jour, the order of the day. And that's the story of 24 members of the German government who are ecstatic about the ideas defended by Hitler and Goering to rebuild the German society. And they just want everybody to work, they just want, you know, better society it takes them a while to realize the cost for letting Hitler you know get all the power and let him do what he wants to do for Germany they just don't understand half of what's implied behind his ideas and that's what that's what's developed that's a very powerful and rich narrative that the author gave us it's well written like I was saying it's rich rousing you have very subtle and detailed moments of history that are uh, narrated and there's an intelligent organization in the narrative it's hard to understand where he wants to go at the beginning but once you've reached that part where you understand it all that's when it becomes even better you know that's one of my favorite Goku actually it's also deep because it's the story of how it's easy for the human being to repeat the mistakes of history and after that, you get to 2018 with Nicolas Mathieu, who wrote Leurs Enfants Après Eux and Their Children After Them. This is a story of teenagers, you know, who live in the east of France in a working class town. They're kind of looking for what they're going to do with themselves. And you just follow them 
during three or four summers, I don't really remember, and they're young and just each time it's two years after two years. And they're just looking for a future where, <laughs> where, de where it's basically hopeless, unfortunately. Obviously, it's a very depressing book. Uh, <laughs> while you read it you just you just cannot see a way out for the characters it's good in a way that it's pretty accurate of what life can be for the working class and you know the future people want for the kids and and sometimes sometimes you just you just can't dream that much you know because of what society and the world is offering you the tone that the author uses the style is also using a lot of slang um, but it's very, very strong. The tone is very oral, and that's very original, especially for a Goncourt. You don't see that in all the other Goncourts, especially in the last 10 years. There's tons of dialogues, too, that are not very interesting, but that's, that's, that's fun because it's the way kids and teenagers speak, and you know, usually their conversation is not super deep and interesting. Uh, I've been there, I know. <laughs> So that part is actually to me what made it the winner of that year. In 2019, the winner was Jean-Paul Dubois for his book Tous les hommes n'habitent pas le monde de la même façon. This is the story of a guy who is in prison and he remembers how he got there. He also tells about his life in the cell. I was actually surprised that this author would win a concours because the other book I read from him was just garbage it was really bad so you just get that book into your hands and you're like okay so how was he able to win the Goku and actually this one is very humble this is a very sensitive this is unfortunately with the story of a guy who lost it all who lost his life who lost the love of his life he got in prison for actually reasons you can sympathize with. Overall, it's it's very human and emotional. It's a very beautiful book. It's simple, there's nothing sensational about it. It's just simple life with simple characters, sometimes simple events that can break somebody. It was very touching. It was a very good book. I highly recommend it. One of the very few. <laughs> Last but not least, the winner from last year, 2020, Hervé Letelier for L'Anomalie, the anomaly in English. Basically the story is a flight from Paris lands in New York, but there's a problem. It already landed three months before that. I just don't want to tell you more because a lot of things happen, but that's just the beginning of the beginning of it all beginning of the story. To me it was a must read. To me it's the best of the collection of the 10 I told you about. It's very different from the other winners. The author also was extremely surprised he won the he won the Goncourt. Why is it so good? For several reasons. It's gonna be hard to just identify them all. First of all, it's a book very anchored in our time. The timeline is the, in this book is very important because he wrote it, the author wrote it like during 2019 and the early 2020. What's weird is that it's very prophetic somehow because basically with different words and a different situation but told about like the January 6th insurrection in America. When you read about it right after it happened, that's, that's actually my case, I read it in March 2021 right after you know the insurrection, you're out of breath because it's it looks exactly like what happened. People, you know, demonstrating and just being extremely violent. Uh, in the book it's for religious reasons, if I remember well. It's just the resemblance is appalling. It's very cynical, satirical, you have very good puns. You just laugh, especially with Trump. That's never mentioned, uh, but the author makes fun of him pr pretty well, actually. And it's very modern in the writing. we first asked at the beginning of this video about the Goncourt books. So remember, the first question was, are all Goncourt books about war? Well, 
Of course, no, now I can say no, uh, but a good 40% of them are actually dealing with war, uh, whether it is uh, the Spanish War, World War I and World War II, or, or even the war in Algeria. What we can also see, though, is that a good amount of them deal with uh, current affairs when they were published, or at least written, uh, such as the anomaly, or even and their children after them, or even the nanny. The second question we wanted to answer was, are all Goncourt books good and worth reading? Obviously, no, right? <laughs> you could see I hated some of them and I just couldn't stand some of them. And others that I really appreciated and I was surprised about them. The topics and the styles, of course, are extremely different and it's a question of whether you like it or not, if you're used to reading that type of thing. Style and everything, it's really a question of appreciation. It's just that when you look for something that you kind of know you're, you will like because it's your type of story or genre, it's just that you may miss some of the things that can be out there. And I need to thank my father for that because he's the one who's been buying some of the Gunkul books for me. So thank you, Papa. <laughs> Of course you'll find books that you'll love more than others. You know, it's called variety. Everything is out there for almost every taste. It's just that somehow it can be disappointing because such a prize should confirm that you're gonna read a really good book and there should be consensus around this book. But it's not always the case, obviously. You saw that I personally hated some of them, like Compass, which is not the case for everybody. Some will say that it's the best book they've ever read, when to you it's not, and the contrary can happen. And then last but not least, why <laughs> these, these specific books win the prize compared to the other contestants each year? And, and that's actually the hardest question to answer, because of course to each his own, but it looks like some friendships between publishing houses and, and some jury members may help sometimes, or even the reputation. There's actually some publishing houses that have the majority of the winners, like Gaillard. Gaillard is actually one of those very famous French publishing houses, one of the most famous ones and the most respected ones. It looks like the topics developed in some of the books that are definitely about current affairs in the world help the winners. It plays in their favor and probably the jury just uh, wants to acknowledge that hey what's happening in the world we're not closing our eyes to it so let's just recognize somebody who spoke about this very important topic. So for example you know Compass was published in 2015 and at the time Europe was in a massive crisis about immigrants. People were fleeing Syria, among other countries. Uh, they were fleeing war, poverty, repression. And at the time, Europe was had a really hard time managing this uh, flux of immigrants and also without really being... Another example could be And Their Children After Them that was published in 2018 and it was very relevant with the Yellow Vest movement that started a month or two before that, before the book was chosen for the Gonko Prize. Of course the author wrote it before. What's interesting with this book, even though it's a very depressing book, uh, is that it's really showing what's happening in France's society, it totally mirrors what happens in other countries, you know, for working class families and who are struggling with low income and tight budget and, and rising prices in everyday life. So it definitely benefited from this atmosphere, you know, of the time. The reasons that could get a book the prize could be the writing, the style, the topic, the friendships between people and uh, the reputation of some editor can also be controversies, can also be the originality. Uh, so I, I have the feeling that literally the jury is just awarding something different each year and not something that everybody would find valuable. That's the most important thing. This is the end of this video. Thank you for watching it. I hope you liked it. Don't forget that you can read the reviews of the books I presented today on my website in French, livriotech.fr. See you soon for new adventures and of course, new literatures. Bisous bisous!
Vas-y, 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 c'est ça tourne là. Oh, on va reprendre. Ouais. <rire> People usually don't like talking about parenting and how to be a parent. It's not a rap. He just runs. <laughs> He's right here. <laughs> so French runs everywhere. You okay? No. no. <laughs>